All right, I have here with me T.J. Kirk, the amazing atheist. No, 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 lies. All lies. Lies, slander, disgusting, evil, wretched, filthy, dirty, disgusting lies. You have nothing, sir. I have nothing. It's true. I've... You have nothing. <laughs> you are you are bereft of things. Oh, um, this whole so, video anyway, is just yeah. false pretenses right from the start. I'm here. The great, the great one, the magnificent, magnanimous, <laughs> beautiful uh, T.J. Kirk, the amazing atheist. That's correct. Bruce Valanche, whatever you want to call me. Oh, most I'm people here. know you as Bruce Valanche, but we'll call you T.J. Kirk just for the time being. Yeah, just, just humor me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's um, a beautiful thing. For the few, for the small handful who don't know, he crossed a million fuck, subscribers. Fuck you. I mean, fuck you. Well, look. No, not you, but the people the the people you're talking to, the don't knowers. Yeah, yeah. They they could die in uh, several fires. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. We'll... A series of fires. I want the first fire to just scare the shit out of them, <laughs> and they think they're safe, and then another fire springs up, and they get some you know third degree burns on a leg or something, <laughs> and cover from that, and then the hospital that they're recovering in catches fire, and then they burn all the way to death. So. That's that's the that's, only that's the only fitting fire that they can go die in. That's the that's, right. Well, three fires. Well, yeah, you know, maybe four. You know, you could you could draw it out. You could really draw it out. But there's an argument. But yeah, to anyone maybe. anyone who doesn't know every detail of my existence is probably not worthy of existence. So, <laughs> I used existence twice, real close together, and now I feel like that was awkward. But whatever, you know. You gotta just roll with the punches live. What you can, what you gonna do? That's what. That's right. That's fucking the nature of the beast. We're, Sorry, I keep we're gonna do it live. Intro shit. So anyway, um, I'm I'm, an, I'm an obnoxious bastard. Everyone knows that. <laughs> you go ahead and uh, introduce whatever needs to be said, and I'll just I'll zip my lip. Oh look, I was just I was just gonna say that you were you recently you know well not that recently a couple of years ago passed a million subscribers. You've been on Joe Rogan a couple times. You haven't quite finished the Joe Rogan trilogy. You made it two thirds of the way there, and uh, you even appeared on CNN when they cut you short. So mm. I remember mm. that very clearly. That was pretty funny. And uh, yeah, that's huh? that's basically just my uh, intro for the small handful that don't know. Um, zip. Mm -hmm. Now I'm speaking again. Yeah. Cool. So let's do the, let's do an, let's do an interview. All right, let's get so to where it. Where do you get your inspiration? No, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> oh fuck! I'm I'm being interviewed. Shit. I wasn't yeah, prepared. Just turning the table. You know, I don't have any questions prepared. Fuck. I could pull some up. I could pull up some random questions. Oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I'm so prolific on YouTube. I think everyone knows all that needs to be if known. If you were in a barrel of vomit up to your neck and some dude came to punch you in the face, would you get punched in the face or would you duck down your head into the vomit to avoid the punch? Yeah, that's the real question. Oh fuck, dude! You've you you you've, you've fucking stumped me right off the bat. Fuck. Right. <laughs> yeah. The punch knocks you out, and then you drown in the vomit. You know, we'll so see, you're that... probably better off just taking the dunk. But the the way I see it. it is like, even if you dunk, the guy could pull you out of the vomit and then punch you anyway. Like, let's just say, for the sake of the hypothetical, that he's just throwing that one punch. To see what decision you make. Okay. All right. Well, in, if that's yeah. the case, I'm gonna fucking that's how dunk. It goes. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Hey, look. You that's know, how you survive. Sometimes in this world, you gotta you gotta do some some vomit diving to, to live. That's the tough decisions that you have to make. You know. That's that's the thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, that's what separates the boys from the men. See. All I, right. I don't know. I I I'm happy with bullshit vamping, but you know, I I will I will ask you some questions eventually. Rest assured. <laughs> uh, it's, it's vamp. This is vamp. Just no, okay, go ahead. Ask ask a question. All right. I'm intrigued. I want to know the questions? Well, I like questions. I don't know. Some of these are going to be stuff you've heard in ideology, but the first uh, one uh, is an obvious hmm. one, and it's uh, when you first started uh, when you did rant number one. Did you think? Uh, did you think of it as a potential way to make a living, or were you just doing it for fun? Or, um, trying to put myself back in the ancient mindset of that. Uh, I guess that um, you know when when YouTube came about, um, I, I didn't really have 
many expectations about making that video. I'd already kind of played around with making videos before um, before YouTube even was a, like a thing. I'd made some little, like, you know, amateur ass movies just to like amuse myself. Um, but I never really thought about like, what if I just turn on a camera and, and rant, but I saw that people were doing that on YouTube and like, wow, people are just literally recording themselves talking. That seems cool. I like talking. I like bloviating about my stupid fucking opinions. So I just did it, you know, as a hobby, I guess. And, um, I don't know. I, I think it was probably not until a little bit later that I started to wonder about money making potential or possibly even, you know, pursuing that sort of thing as some kind of career. Right. And uh, it wasn't until <clears throat> I made a video about Sarah Palin and it got a shit ton of views and a bunch of advertising revenue that I was like, huh. And um, that video got like over a million views long, long time ago. Mm hmm. 2008 or 2007 whenever Sarah Palin was announced yeah. as uh, John McCain's running mate and uh, I saw some real money from that and I was like wow that was way easier than the way I'm making money right now and way more fun and it's something I already do as a hobby so why not fucking you know continue to pursue it but it probably wasn't until that video's success that I thought like ooh maybe this is something like I could just do right right uh, because prior to that, I was doing like web design stuff, uh, which I could do, but it never, it was always like a chore. I never liked it. I was learning JavaScript. I'd pretty much mastered CSS at that point um, and HTML. And I was just starting to learn JavaScript and, you know, trying to get into like, you know, a bunch of the coding languages and shit. Uh -huh. uh, weighed my way into that. But uh, it was never really for me. It was just something I was doing because it was something I had some inkling of how to do. And nowadays, I don't even I don't remember how to do a fucking style sheet anymore. I don't. It's just been too long. I remember. Yeah, I, I remember like the the most basic HTML. But you know, I don't know. Uh, I certainly don't remember even a fucking shred of JavaScript. So right. I don't even know if the fucking I don't even know what 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 of those things are being used anymore. I don't know what the fucking current standards are for that shit. But at at a time I could have told you. Yeah. Me, you know, in 2007 could have told you about it. <laughs> but that's like a lifetime ago now and I've totally forgotten and I'm glad I don't need those skills anymore. Yeah. No, it seems like um doing like I understand that cuz that stuff's pretty dry and doing YouTube has a higher potential to be entertaining for you while you're also making a living, you know? Right, exactly. And not only that, but, um, you know, I had uh, a little small web design company and I had some clients and clients are shit. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like clients. I don't like trying to keep people happy. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather just come on YouTube and say some shit that makes everyone unhappy and they all give it like d down votes and shit like boo, <laughs> boo. And I'm like, eh, eh, you still watched. Fuck you. Yeah, all you need is the view. I never understood why people ever cared about like downvotes, man. Some of my favorite videos were like the most downvoted. Mm. My video against soccer, my video against these retards driving bicycles. Yeah. Uh, video against Ron Paul back in the day. <laughs> man, that's that, old like, school. Following. Yeah, I know. Videos against Buddhism. I, I made a shit ton of videos that everybody hated, and I loved them. It's, I still love it. Well, it's fun to, you know, it's funny. I think people think, oh, my idea isn't being accept accepted, so I better hide it. It's like they don't I do don't it. Know. See, that's the thing. I don't give a fuck if you accept my idea or not. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm a genius or retard or something in between. You know, I'm just out there spouting my horse shit, and uh, you listened, so fuck you. So, <laughs> I think that's the best approach to take because, uh, uh, you know, just, just saying what I don't people want to hear. the best, but it's mine, so. Well, saying what people want to hear gets fucking boring fast, you know? You gotta cause a little bit of, uh, head scratching and fucking, or else nothing happens, you know? It's, it's boring. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Well, Amen, I say. I had no Put idea. The, the Sarah Palin video being your first, I, uh, the first one where you saw the chance to make it as a career, I didn't know that. But I mean, that's one of your first yep. videos that I saw, so that's actually, uh, interesting to know. Yep. Um... 
So another uh, when I saw the money making potential of the platform. Yeah. Back when the platform had money making potential. <laughs> yeah, before you had to rely on Patreon. Before the dark times, before the Wajiki. Um I, well this is another sort of social media oriented thing. What what is it about Twitter arguments that draw you I I've seen you spend time trying to reason with people who clearly will not and don't do not want to be reasoned with. What is it that draws you in about those Twitter arguments? Um, I think the fact that I'm a total fucking idiot probably helps. <laughs> you know, just like I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm like, I will now try to reason with imbeciles. <laughs> like, all right. What a fool's errand. But I like it. I don't know. I mean, like you can I, I mean, uh, if if I'm in a Twitter argument or something like my wife can tell instantly just by looking at me because I'm just sitting there staring at my phone like it's a dog turd in my hands and just typing like aggression like mm, fucking mm, 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 fucking retard pieces of shit you know yeah and i always get in i mean like i never know what's gonna get in an argument like i sometimes i'll post shit i'm like oh this is gonna rile them up and then it's just crickets and then other times you know i'm like this is a little innocuous tweet that shouldn't offend anyone and then it's like oh shit firestorm <laughs> like i made that tweet about um uh lara croft's tits yeah yep. you know and for some reason well i know the reason really but international news stories like there was like fucking 50 articles Famous or something written beard, about, tj Kirk written about that to... tweet <laughs> And it wasn't even like a super popular tweet or anything. Like it was just like a meh. Like no one even gave a shit about that tweet other than the fucking press. Mm -hmm. And they just they pushed it everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Huge fucking story. And I realized in retrospect, it's like, oh, this is just they're trying to use like me too to sell the movie. And they saw my tweet and they're like, ooh, here's an opportunity to be like. <laughs> Look at this sexist who doesn't like the movie. If you go see the movie, that means you're not sexist. It's like, okay, that's fine. Use me as your fucking uh, marketing pitch for this garbage film that made no money. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You were just, you've, you've played. Made no money because it had no tits. Made no money because it had no tits. <laughs> you unintentionally no, I mean, like, played into their marketing strategy pretty much, like. Pretty much, yeah. La I mean, Lara. I, I mean, I maintain to this day, Lara Croft should have threateningly, distressingly big tits, and if she doesn't, she's not Lara Croft, and I don't care for her. Uh, I mean, it's it's like you know, if uh, if Mario while we're on the no subject, mustache. Ghostbusters should be men. <laughs> Just saying. No, I do. You know, that. you should have a token girl, maybe. You know, whatever. But uh, you know, it should be mostly men. <laughs> because sexism. Oh, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh, look, the press is going to pick pick that one up again on you, TJ. Or... Cool. Maybe they'll use it to promote the, the, another. I don't know. Some other shit. They're, they're never going to. They're never going to make the mistake of making a sequel to the 2016 Ghostbusters. So I guess. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's not really much of a marketing plan there. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. It's. Uh, they've already tried that. I mean, like, I don't. I don't go fucking like. We need to remake. Fucking. Uh... <laughs> Aaron Steel Brockovich, magnolias dude. with dudes. How about fried green tomatoes, but with dudes? You know, like, <laughs> it, fuck you. All right? I mean, Ghostbusters is ours. All right? How many fucking girl fans of Ghostbusters are there? I'm not saying there's zero. But I think we all know the majority of people who love Ghostbusters have fucking dicks and balls. Well, I mean, it's just... And the thing is, it's lazy as fuck just for like, hey... Let's take this pre-existing thing and then change a few fucking pointless things. And, ooh, it's new and fresh again. It's like... What if all the Ghostbusters are hamsters? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Oh, nah. Yeah. Nah, nah, dog. Well, that's nah. that's the thing about this, though. Like, to go back to the Twitter arguments, like... I know it feels <laughs> like you're yelling into a void where the only people who agree with you already agree with you. But have yeah. you ever seen someone's mind changed through a Twitter argument? couple times a couple times a few times okay. yeah occasionally so it's not it's unheard not, of but it's not no it's not unheard of but it's not it's not like commonplace not that i've seen but you know uh -huh. 
I mean, maybe uh, maybe someone more persuasive than me has changed more minds than I have. But <laughs> you know, I could say, uh, speaking for myself, uh, very rarely do I see someone like I stand corrected. <laughs> oh, when I do see that, it's almost like, what am I in? Like a sci-fi movie? What's going on here? It's just that fucking uncommon. Yeah, it's like he he lived his whole life. In a world of retards, but then one reasonable comment shook his <laughs> belief that he, you know, he was like, whatever, I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is pretty rare, pretty fucking rare. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just going to switch gears away from Twitter because fuck, I mean, I spend so Yay. much time on that, but fuck that as well. So yeah, but fuck that. Yeah, but fuck that. And uh, so I want to ask, who came up with the original idea for um, Deep Fat Fry? Was it totally, like, collaborative, or did one of you had the main vision, or, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I mean, look, uh, my recollection was that I was the driving force behind most of the decision-making in there, uh, but... It should be noted that uh, the way my mind works, uh, I'm kind of like, you ever seen the episode where uh, Cartman and Jimmy come up with a joke together and it was mostly Jimmy, but then Cartman yes. through <laughs> a series of recollections takes more and more credit for writing the joke. So I think I'm kind of like that. Right. Uh, so, you know, like even if Scotty and Paul, like I might've been fucking asleep with a fucking jizz covered <laughs> sock in my hands and just kind of blurrily opened my eyes and threw on a pair of sweatpants and shambled out somewhere and Scotty and Paul might have been like, hey, TJ, we got this new show idea, Deep Fat Fried and blah, blah, blah. And it could have gone down like that. And I was just like, yeah, 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 whatever. And by now I'd be claiming credit. So whatever, you know, I mean, uh, don't take my word for anything. But I think it was me. I'm pretty sure it was all my genius. Unless there's things you don't like about it, in which case that was Scotty and Paul. Oh, okay. Okay. I think that's yeah. a fair and balanced Any answer. fault that you find with it, probably Paul, probably Scotty. Uh, everything good about it, me, 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 me. Yep. Well, look, I, there was one thing about Deep Fat Fried that I really prefer about the way you guys handle it versus DP, and that's that there's a lot less, like, the lame old YouTube drama type stuff. It feels more like it's just, like, you're focusing on these other topics, learning about topics, bouncing off each other in a fun way, but it doesn't have to re yes. resort to the stupid, like, oh, G-Man and Brett Keen. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's Well, yeah, that was, that was definitely our goal because I'm pretty sure we were all sick to death of being part of a show that was about that. And uh, we were all just like, all right, so new show, none of this. You know, none of this, like... What's Wild Bill for America up to? <laughs> you know, like, who gives a fuck what he's up to? Yeah. Unless he just, unless, the only way I'm going to cover Wild Bill for America is like, Wild Bill for America, fucked to death by angry elephant. Then we'll cover him on Flash Fried and laugh. But, <laughs> you know, aside from that, no, we don't care what, we don't care what any of the gallery of, of retards is doing. You know, we want to focus on ourselves and our audience. We don't want to focus on a bunch of um, broken down old losers out there in the internet. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, not that people don't try to make us, but we're just we're always like, eh. You just don't give it. a Yeah, you know, I mean, like, goddamn, I'm fucking 33 now, going to be 34 in not too long. So, and, you know, Paul's 38, Scotty's, what, 30? I don't know. 31 uh so like you know we're 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 big boys now you know there's just time to put aside the the high school level like you'll never believe what stacy said about margaret you know it's like <laughs> it's a shit i hope they both fucking drown yeah drown in that fucking thing of vomit that the dude was gonna like punch us in yeah. yeah yeah drown in the vomit pool which is also on fire yeah I think that's a good fucking plan. And yeah. well, I remember actually, you know, going back, like when you first interacted with Paul's ego on YouTube, I, I wasn't around this early. I started watching you guys in probably like 2010 or so, but your first, Johnny come lately piece of shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But your first interaction was like the disagreement over the ASU 
And uh, I was just going to ask, like, after that whole thing went by, when did you and Paul start interacting, like, beyond that sort of crap? You know what I mean? I don't really know. Uh, I'd always watched his videos. I always thought he was good. I always tried to encourage him to make more videos. Um, you know, so there was never, like, animosity. Like, oh, he criticized me, so he's my enemy or something. Uh-huh. Uh, I was always a supporter. Um, you know, there was a few times I got in some little squabbles with him over this or that or well, the other thing. But uh, for the most part, you know, uh, I was pretty positive about what he was saying. And uh, I was always a big supporter. I always tried to blast his videos out there, make sure people, you know, saw them. <clears throat> so, um, you know, when we started doing DP, and we started involving other people. You know, one of the first uh, uh, people that started springing up in my mind was Paul. And, uh, you know, I wanted to bring him in on the Brett Keen stuff that we were doing. I wanted to bring him in on all kinds of little things we were doing. And, you know, the more and more we worked together, the more and more I just really liked the nature of that collaboration and uh, his comedic timing and the kind of uh, person he was, uh, is, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and um, it just kind of went from there. I mean, there was never, I don't, I don't remember there being like a, a period of like we're, negative towards each other and then we're gonna make amends or something it was always like we're friendly but you know occasionally we'll disagree and i think to this day you know we'll do that right um you know we had a big spat about uh louis ck uh on an episode you know there's been there's been a few little squabbles here and there we disagree about uh bernie sanders age being as big an issue he thinks it's a bigger issue than i do Um, he's way more into the the upper age limit thing uh uh, I don't I don't agree with him on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're not supposed to agree with Paul on everything or even, you know, necessarily anything, I guess. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I like people who have out there ideas and voice different perspectives, you know. Uh, and, you know, sometimes his perspective is popular and it's what people want to hear. And sometimes it's not what people want to hear, but maybe it's something they should hear. You never know. Yeah. So I don't know. I always like that about Paul. I like that he speaks his mind no matter what. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't care about like, oh, what's going to be the consequence? Uh, you know, there's not a lot of uh, him sitting around trying to craft a message like with guile and, you know, uh, trying to deceive people or make people think sure, a certain sure. way or manipulate their emotions in such and such fashion. He doesn't really do a whole lot of that. So, um, you know, that's something I appreciate. I think he's a pretty straight shooter about what he believes, what he thinks, what his opinion is on any given subject. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something I'm always going to respect from people, uh, whether I agree with them 90% of the time or 9% of the time. Right. It's, it's, uh, he, he's not a bullshitter. He says what he actually yeah. thinks. Yeah, he does. And, uh, well, as far as I can tell, unless he's a really good bullshitter. He just pulled the wool over my eyes, you know. Dude, he, I don't know. He could be a fucking character actor like Alex Jones, you know. Could be. Oh, yeah. Never <laughs> uh, well, with the ASU thing. Now, I want to ask you about that. I know this is going way back in your career, but do you th- do you think there is some sort of need for atheists to unite, or do you think that was just a thing that was a product of, like, a youthful idea, or, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that nowadays? Uh, I think it would have been a good thing. Um, I think that, you know, I think that uh, when New Atheism came along, we pushed the narrative uh, only so far... And then we kind of said, yeah, good enough, and backed away from it and started infighting and started uh, squabbling over politics and squabbling over gender and squabbling over all these uh, different things. Um, I think that, uh, you know, a, a longer, more sustained push for acceptance of our ideas was probably in order. Uh-huh. You know, people act. People act like uh, today on the internet, like, oh, atheist, atheist, whatever. Everyone's an atheist. Atheism, what? Like, uh, statistics don't bear that out. Nothing really bears that out. Still a hugely majority Christian country. Yeah. Still a hugely majority religious or spiritual country. So uh, I don't understand how the time came to rest on our laurels and say, well, we did it. You know, <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> I, it never happened, so I don't know why we all got it into our heads. I think we just got sick of it, you know? It's just like, eh, let some future generation do the rest of the fight. We're, we did our part. We can, we can only That's yell at them so long until, you know, you, you, make, yeah. you get to the point where you make the same argument like the fourth time, and then you say, God, I'm, I'm over this, you know? Like, like the 400th, but yeah, yeah. 
Um, you know, you get, yeah, you just, you know, you get fatigue, and I think a lot of people who were big atheists back in the day got fatigue. But there's a, there's a lot of new atheists coming out uh, today on YouTube that really have no sort of, um, no sort of direct lineage in terms of inspiration from the generation that was doing it in my heyday. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's some good ones out there. Um, there's like a rationality rules, yeah. uh, pretty good guy uh, or a good content maker. I don't know anything about him as a person. Um, there's like a cosmic skeptic, Mr. Atheist. I don't know. I'm not huge into the, their content, but I've seen them out there. And from what I what I can tell, they're making some good quality shit. They seem a little bit more cerebral than uh, the generation of atheists that I was a part of because ours was more of a like, we're atheists and fuck you. <laughs> you know, these guys are way more like you know. Let us calmly explain the science. You know, and uh, it's 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 cool. I mean, it's cool. It's a great good approach. You know, whatever. You catch more flies with honey, I guess. Uh-huh. Kind of miss the fuck you days, but you know that's uh, hey, you know that time has come. I that time is gone. Rather. That that's sort of like a whole. That's almost reflective <laughs> of like a big cultural shift overall, though. Like the whole like yeah, yeah man. everyone's coming back now. Yeah, it's gonna be polite. Uh, and actually, you know, on the topic of like YouTube atheists and stuff, are there any other ones from that era that you know of who have actually survived other than you and Paul? Like, uh, you know, from all the way back in let's say two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Um, if by survived you mean they're still making content that attracts. Uh, a somewhat substantive audience, enough of an audience for them to, let's say, let's make the criteria that for them to make a living off of it, then, then no. Uh huh. I think I can't think of a single one besides me and Paul. I mean, like, uh, you know, some of them are still kicking around in some form or another, but um, you know, most of them have kind of faded into total obscurity at this point. Right. Um, I, I also wanted to ask just another thing. I know a lot of your library was deleted at one point and what was the reasoning behind that why why are so many of your old videos kind of hard to find or archived elsewhere uh well youtube uh did a major crackdown at one point where they decided uh we're gonna be family friendly and uh you know i know it sounds familiar because they've done it again <laughs> since yeah. but uh there was their first attempt to do it a while back and it was actually, uh, you know, I, I think people think that this current attempt is the most heavy handed. But from my perspective, the first time they tried to do it, which I think it was around 2009 or 10, somewhere around there, they did it. Um, you'll notice that videos from around that time, um, I bleep my profanity as well because there was a huge uh, negative reception towards profanity. Right. And uh, a lot of my videos on my channel, like the thing is, they didn't when YouTube made these changes and said, now we're family friendly, they never grandfathered in the content that was already on YouTube. So people were having at the time their channels removed for videos that were old that, you know, followed the rules that YouTube had at that time. So that's, I mean, it's, it's kind of bullshit. You know, you put, you put something up that's not against the rules and then they change the rules and then retroactively apply it to the content. Total bullshit, totally unfair. But they were doing it, so it became necessary in my mind to preserve my channel by uh, taking some stuff off of there. There was a lot of stuff on there that uh, I just was like, "Yeah, what do I care about this?" Like anything that was, um, you know, part of like some some at the time it was called ponage kind of drama bullshit. It's oh, like yeah. all this can go, all this can go because you know it's it's dead. No yeah. one cares about it anymore. It's not, you know, the me fucking calling out some retard. Who said some stupid shit back in two thousand, you know, eight? Is not that's that's not timeless. That doesn't age like wine, <laughs> you know. So, whatever. I don't care. Get rid of it. Uh, and then there was a lot of like videos where I was like espousing my libertarian beliefs and stuff like that. And then there was just a lot of videos where I was saying um, I was making arguments, but then I that I'd made better since then because I'd gotten better. Oh, uh, right. So a lot of stuff, you know, there was the, the three re- I mean, I just figured like since I'm pruning my channel, some stuff was cut out of necessity because it didn't follow the rules. Some stuff was cut because it represented a political viewpoint that I didn't believe in anymore. And some stuff was cut just because I thought it was shit. 
Yeah. So uh, there was that one big purge. I don't think that I'll ever do that again. I think if I were to d- have to do that today, I would just private a bunch of stuff or something like that. But, um, but you know, at the time, it wasn't like I didn't view it as like, oh, this is my legacy or these are my babies or some shit. I just, eh, whatever, get rid of them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, these aren't useful to me anymore. These are actually a detriment to my channel in various ways. So fuck them. They're gone. And, uh, you know, you can still find them out there on a few, like, little archive channels here and there that captured some of them. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Yeah, yeah. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to know. I knew there was the whole profanity crackdown, but then I noticed, like, other stuff of yours was also gone. So it's, it's good to, it's interesting to hear that it's basically yeah. just because you thought it was rubbish that didn't even really need to be kept around. It was just served no purpose right. anymore. Yeah, I mean, if uh, like if I was to do that again, I'm sure there'd be plenty of stuff on my channel now that I'd be like, eh, eh, mm-hmm. eh, 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 eh. I'm not super married to the stuff that I've done. I'm always thinking about the next thing, not the previous thing. Right. Uh, so that's kind of just how I am. Well, I'm going to make you think about the previous thing again for a minute here, TJ, and I'm going to ask. Cool. I know, I know. Yeah, previous thing. <laughs> how, well, I want to ask, how did you and Ben first meet? And, like, whose idea was the, you know, similar to the DFF question, how, whose idea was Drunken Peasants, and how was that sort of formed? Uh, we met because uh, he was moving to my area, and he was a fan, and uh, he contacted my wife at the time, now my ex-wife, who... Um, you know, was like, hey, you know, talk to this dude. He seems like he's a fan. Maybe we should, you know, we don't really have any friends around here, so maybe we should go meet him, talk to him, hang out with him, uh, meet him at this Mexican place. And we went and had a lunch, and I was kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. He seems like an all right guy. And then um, he got, uh, we met, a, we hung out a few more times since then. I kind of didn't really, I felt like he was really hard to get to know. Uh, like he wasn't really super uh, approachable necessarily. He was kind of guarded. Right. Uh, but eventually uh, we drank together. He got drunk. He let his guard down a little. It was kind of neat to actually, uh, you know, and we actually got to know each other a little bit. And, um, you know, we would hang out socially here and there. And occasionally he would talk about like, man, it'd be cool to do a podcast or something like that. And, you know, eventually I was like, yeah, it might be fun. And I figured... Uh, you know, we'll do this little podcast thing and, uh, you know, maybe we'll they'll probably end up being like five or six episodes before we just both like, yeah, whatever. But uh, it actually got <coughs> pretty fucking big and, um, you know, uh, I guess that's that, you know. It, it, um, it's funny how uh, something that's not really, a, not really a very interesting story behind it or anything. Just, you know, two dudes, and, you know, hey, you seem all right. Oh, you seem all right. Let's do a show together. <laughs> okay, here it is. And hey, people like it. I guess let's keep doing it. Well, That's pretty much it. I just think it's 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 actually cool though because something that you thought would just be like a, f- a throwaway thing for a couple episodes actually ended up right. spawning something. Yeah, so I mean, like if you'd asked me like how many episodes is this gonna have, I'd have been like, well, I don't know, like five or six, maybe, and probably last maybe a couple months. I didn't think it was gonna be anything. <laughs> well, um, well, it's interesting to hear the history of. I know a lot of people wonder that, and they make up all these weird stories. And it's nice to just hear that it's, you know, the truth of it. And, uh, sure. well then uh, to go to the YouTube topic, once again, there's, I know it's changed a lot over the years, like not just in terms of policy, but like the interface has changed and shit. I rem- yeah, many times. I remember on the old YouTube, you could actually set a custom background picture. You could set your font and your color yeah, and was- everything. It was like uh, it was like a MySpace page back then. Well, that's a- super super customizable. That was like a popular thing to do at the time, but unfortunately, I, I don't know. Maybe too many people just chose a bunch of eyesore shit. Like, I'm gonna have an animated GIF of a fucking skull spinning around, <laughs> covered in glitter, that's tiled over the background 852 times. You know and and then you get to these gaudy, hideous, ugly pages and stuff. And, you know, I think, uh, I guess that went out of vogue. People are like, no, I don't want choices about how stuff looks. <laughs> I want it to all be uniform and boxy and shit. And YouTube's like, you, you got it. I, so that's that. It's funny. It's like, I understand that it was, a lot of those pages were ugly. But the uniformness is almost like ugly in its own way. Like, we're all white oh, yeah. squares, you know. It's ugly because it's just bereft of anything, you know, interesting or yeah. That 
it does it, there's no there's no you can't convey a personality as much as you used to be able to right right that's that's the issue with it i think but you know whatever um no use crying over spilt milk those days are gone yeah no i uh i just thought it was kind of an interesting change and, and like i know youtube now they're they're doing all this stuff that basically seems like they want to become the new tv and i'm like yeah that that almost makes me hope and think that it might come to a head soon and that like an actual independent YouTube of old may spawn as a result. I know we've, <laughs> we've wanted yeah, been, this, but it's never happened. How many times, how, how long have I, have I been crossing my fingers for that? Like, come on. <laughs> it's going to happen come one day. Come on. And every time one comes up, it's like, this is going to be the one. Okay, it's out of business. Okay, YouTube bought it and shut it down. Okay. It's like, all right. Nope, not not fooling me again. No, I think it's unfortunately it feels like it's just a pipe dream. Like it would be nice, but those days have come and gone. Would it be nice if there was an alternative to YouTube? <laughs> yes, it would, but it's not. There's no, there's no really thing. Yeah. And it would have been bit you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. You got some. That's gonna. That's gonna do it. Bit it's gonna be, gonna the, be fuck- the one, dude. That's gonna be the fucking rock in the face of Goliath. No, YouTube is one. People need to accept that they they make the rules, yeah. and their rules don't make sense. So there you go. So we're just kind of stuck. Well, I, <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna switch gears. To the, <coughs> pardon me. No, no, you're right. Away from the shithole that is YouTube, and ask you know a more banal question. I know you're not much of a gamer, but do you have like a top three favorite games or something? You know. Um, yeah, I like the, um, the little paddle where you, uh, bounce the ball. Oh, that's a fucking classic, dude. That's um, like um, a, um, that's a top seller. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. And I like, uh, I like the game. I like 52 pickup where you just throw a bunch of cards on the ground and it's like, Another pick them classic. up. Another, yeah. Yep. And, uh, I of course like the game of Thrones, you know? <laughs> On HBO, Man, that's a good one. God damn it, TJ! I was hoping you were gonna say Tetris somewhere in there, and then I could be like, "I'm gonna fucking take you down in Tetris." But then you had to fucking, you circumvented me, man. Yeah, never expect expect the unexpected, you know. Yeah. Don't ex- no, I have no, I have no real answer to that question. I don't, I don't feel qualified to answer it. I don't play enough. Not enough of a gamer. Gamer. Yeah. yeah. Um, gamer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, another thing about sort of like the entertainment realm, I, I noticed that a lot of films take like larger than life characters and stories and try to shrink them down for like a yeah. realistic adaptation. I call it the uh, demythologizing genre, like the uh, Russell Crowe Robin Hood or yeah. the Hercules with the Rock. Yeah, why, a bunch of those. Why and... are these films? What? What's? Why do you think they keep getting made? Like, what's the draw? Because I feel like it takes uh, away the, the draw. Yeah, the only thing I can... I mean, yeah, it's like making a movie about Superman where he can't fly and he's just... He's not from another planet and, you know, the, his main claim to fame is he's slightly stronger than the average dude, <laughs> but not much. Superman, you know. Like, yeah, I don't understand the idea of, like, let's take away everything that makes the character awesome to make the... Yeah, you know, I don't get it. <laughs> no, the only thing I can figure out as far as why that keeps happening is that Hollywood is not only out of ideas but are actively pursuing the worst possible ideas at all times um and that their desire is to make horrible films that no one will remember or like that's the only explanation i can come up with i mean it 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 does explain the state of hollywood right now so you know the only thing explains it because i mean like if they're actually trying holy shit Oh well, no, they can't be. It's it's easier to just assume that they're trying to fuck up and yeah. succeeding. Um, <laughs> I I want to know also, totally unrelated to Hollywood uh-huh. and stuff. But have you ever seen YouTube poop? And have you ever thought it was funny? Have you ever gotten anything out of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen it. I've laughed at it. Uh, that's about it. You know, it doesn't really stick with you. It's kind of just like, hey, that's weird. And then, you know, you're on to the next thing. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah, no, I just, I've, I've finally started uh, doing a few lately. People liked some that I did, so I've pooped a couple videos of you and Paul. Were you the one who did the uh, the Christmas special? Yeah, that was me, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was funny. I liked that. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. I'm glad you actually ended up seeing it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, speaking of YouTube videos, if if there was no YouTube, what 
just 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 humor me. What do you think would be something that you would have gotten into? You're saying web design, but that wouldn't have really satisfied your creative side. You know, like what is something more creative that you would have done for a career if the opportunity had presented itself? Uh, you know, um, probably uh, build a time machine and go back to the '70s before forensic technology and become a serial killer. That'd be cool. Ah, oh, that's everyone's dream yeah. career, really. Right, you know. <laughs> no, that's no. I have no idea. I don't. I don't know. Uh, alternate timelines. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd have. Uh, I probably would have uh, tried to do one of the thing, other things I was pursuing at the time, like uh, being a writer, or um, you know. So I'd probably just be really, really, really broke right now. Probably <laughs> living in like, you know, some some uh, rented out room banging away on a fucking you know ancient laptop just trying to finish my magnum opus <laughs> you know when this novel hits you guys are gonna regret treating me this way <laughs> yeah. you'll be the biggest fucking author since J.K. Rowling bitch you know, surprise, so something like that. I don't know. Okay. Who okay. knows? Well, I'm just, a... I, don't, I don't fucking know. For all I know, I'm like a fucking tax attorney in the timeline where YouTube never came up I don't know what the fuck I am. It's hard to say. I know it's hard to fucking project into that shit, but I was, <laughs> I was just curious. I was like, you know, I think so many paths could have walked. I mean, maybe I'd have got a job working for, you know, my my stepdad or something. Maybe I'd be in construction. You know, maybe I'd be doing what Stevie is uh, is doing and cleaning up biohazards. Uh, I have no fucking clue. Yeah, doing what I'm doing, fucking loading concrete into trucks all day. It's fucking great. It's the life. Who knows? I uh, well, you know, on that, on a similar note, like, what sort of stuff do you do just for, let's say, like, not just creative, but you know, creative hobbies or just things you do to kill time that don't have anything to do with YouTube or you know, DFF or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I just uh, I watch a lot of TV. I listen to some audio books here and there. I uh, I guess uh, occasionally maybe I'll draw something paint something um i work on my book but that's kind of related to youtube because i'm releasing the chapters on there as i complete them um smoke cigarettes uh look at porn um fuck i don't know i mean 90 percent of what i'm doing when i'm fucking being recreational is just like I'm going to watch every episode of Star Trek Voyager for the 743rd time. <laughs> you get him, Captain Janeway. You get him. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's most of what I do. Um, you know, I don't know. I read some articles. I browse Twitter. You know, I don't know. I just whatever. <clears throat> I don't really have a lot of interesting hobbies. Occasionally, I'll do a little crafts project with my wife. Like, we'll, you know, spray paint some rocking chairs and paint skulls on them or I'll try to organize my house or organize my books or organize my DVDs or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. That's not whatever is just, you know, it's like a catch all like, yeah, you know, things, things, things. damn it. Things that well, I can accept that answer. Um, <laughs> I've only got a few questions left here for you, TJ. Before I'm I always doing it. So whatever you want. Um, Oh, look, uh, I think when it comes to DFF, I know you guys are really close to the 400, uh, 400, 4,000 patron 4, mark. 4,000, yeah. And uh, once you guys hit that mark, because it looks like it's coming up soon, how long will it be until we actually get to see you go to the Big Chief? Not long. I mean, you know, it's, we just got to plan a, a day's drive there and a day's drive back. It uh, shouldn't be too hard, so, uh, you know. I imagine that it will be pretty shortly thereafter. Shouldn't be too long. Good, good. I know a lot of us, just because, I mean, eating eating good greasy spoon food in, like, the most unhealthy part of America. I mean, there's just something, like, that double, double down something good. Something magical there. Something mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward. Now, um, what do you say to the people who talk about Senior Tomat and they say... They make this claim that he's an orange. Like I don't know if you've heard this, if you've seen this. I mean, yeah, I'd prefer not even to address the that kind of heresy. It's uh, a, those too people, disgusting. those people are obviously uh, mentally disturbed. Right. That's all I can say. With those. 
folks. Um, will you ever grow the train conductor mustache out again? Can we see Curly TJ? At one, uh, will we be seeing that again? No, nah, probably not. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, it, it's... I, I, I don't know. My appearance, I change it, like, all the time, so... My facial hair will change. My mustache change. I guess that's part of my facial hair. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I just... There's no consistency. You know, I could fucking shave my eyebrows off tomorrow and oh. start drawing on some angry eyebrows every day. I don't fucking know. Who knows what I'll do? Don't do not do that, TJ. I don't. D- don't don't shave your eyebrows. I, oh, I'm going to do it now. I know, just to spite me. That. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. You don't control me. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I have one last actual substantive question here. and uh, Cool. Last substantive question. Some of the people you've taken Also on. the first substantive question. Oh. <laughs> oh. Snap. Um, Brutal. Christians. Fatality. Flawless victory. All right, go ahead. Fuck. <laughs> Some of the people you've taken on, you know, Christians, Muslims, pagans, and trolls. Pagans and trolls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, MGTOWs, incels, SJWs, Republicans, like the whole. Let's just be honest. Every fucking body. Every. Well, that's the thing. And. You know, a At lot one of their... point or another, everybody, liberals, conservatives, centrists, uh, incels, MGTOW, <laughs> whatever, every fucking group, any group that exists, I have at one point or another said something that pissed them off. So that's how I, that's how I go. Have, have any of those movements, as they call themselves, have they ever had a time where they made just a really good point and you thought, fuck, it just made you reconsider and, you know, uh, was there anything that you can recall that stands out to you like that? Where you're like, man, that's actually a really good point that the that the MGTOWs are bringing up, or something like that, you know? Um, you know, yeah, probably, but hard to remember. Yeah, just, you know, I, I mean, it's not really hard. I mean, you know, there's every. I mean, I, I would say pretty much every group I've I've heard of, there's some kind of point somewhere. But you know, does that does that excuse the group? No, mm. I mean I just I don't I don't really I'm not down with the tribalism thing. I mean you know uh, think for yourself. You don't need to be like I'm part of the whatever the the group. Yeah. One of the big th- I mean that's that was the real problem with uh, ASU is it was uh, me trying to create a group when I'm virulently anti-group. I thought that I could change the rules of how a group is and you can't do that so yeah I mean, that's what i learned from that don't don't form groups don't belong to groups just be yourself and if you do have to be part of a group make sure it's uh tentative to achieve a specific goal like i am uniting with these people to accomplish this and once that is accomplished i will disband from them you mm-hmm. know that's about the only thing i can see it being rational to do uh, and don't set some ridiculous pie in the sky goal, you know, that'll never come. Uh, I just feel it, it's, it's, it's weird to me how people just yield their their brains to, hey, I'm going to install this operating system called MGTOW, for example, onto into my brain. And from now on, I, this is how I think. This is my philosophy and whatever the MGTOW thinkers put forth to me that is what I accept as truth and uh, you know it's hey everyone loves me now because I'm part of this group and all the other people in the group pat me on the back and say yeah you're one of us it's like yeah who cares Mm. you know is that really is that really what you need in life maybe it is but if that's the case then you got bigger problems than you know I'm a man I'm going my own way (laughs) no your problem is you're a conformist little bitch and uh, fuck you. See, that's the thing. I find that those groups, you know, as soon as you say, I'm a part of this group, it comes with all these fucking assumptions. It's best to just avoid. Tell some, yeah. If someone says, like, how do you stand? That's why I try, the biggest misconception that anyone ever has about me at any given time is that I'm on a side. Mm. You know? And I always get held to, like, how can you, how can you, uh, like uh, the other day, um, this uh, girl, uh, Sarah, who is uh, Jake uh, from uh, Hugo and Jake's uh, girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, was like, how can you retweet uh, Stix Hexenhammer 666? He's a Nazi. Like, first of all, I don't think he is. But even if he was, I don't care. 
I'm not on your side. I'm not on his side. I'm not on anyone's side. I'm, I don't even know if I'm on my own fucking side. I'm just out there doing what I fucking do, saying what I say. And, you know, it, it's, it's just like always amuses me when people come to me like, you said this one time, but then you said this this other time. It's like, yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> what don't you get about that? I'm a fucking nut job. Like, how how is that after 13 years of being here and just saying whatever crazy shit pops into my head, how is it not clear that I'm about as, as fucking stable as the San Andreas Fault during a fucking 9.7 on the Richter scale? <laughs> it's because there's you... nothing... Well, it's because you're like, you have these certain videos where you take the really professional tone and you say everything really chill. That's it's minority. Yeah, but I'm faking but... it. I'm faking yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Of course. It's all bullshit. <laughs> I can, of, co- of course, I can fucking, you know, I, I can, I can say something. Mm-hmm. I can make, I mean, look, there's plenty of points that I'm, I'm somewhat consistent on, but you know what? Like tons of shit that I've said, I've said because it was interesting me to, for me to say. Like, if given the choice between being right or being interesting, that is to say thought-provoking, then I'm going to choose that. Uh-huh. I'm going to choose that over being strictly correct about something. Because I'd rather challenge you. I'd rather get you to think about things from a new perspective. Even if you ultimately reject the perspective, maybe there's something of value in that. And everyone always wants everything to be so literal. Mm. Uh, everyone always thinks that a video... Like, everyone thinks that a YouTube video, like a vlog-style YouTube video, is all about what's said on a surface level. They never think, like, maybe there's a subtext. Maybe there's a hidden message. Maybe there's a deeper meaning behind this. And that's got to fucking whatever. I mean, hey, you know, if that's how you want to perceive it, if you're that much of a fucking numbskull that you can't get beyond the surface, the level. surface level of a message, then that's on you. But sometimes what's on the surface and what's really being said aren't the same thing. There's such a thing as irony and sarcasm and symbolism and metaphor and allegory and all kinds of other concepts that maybe you should try to wrap your feeble little fucking minds around (laughs) on occasion. (laughs) Just say it. Okay, sorry. No, no, it's it's funny. I Well, for me, like, it's a perfect example of people's inability to read beyond the surface level was with was exemplified with this whole Gillette shit recently. You know, like, what is it trying to do? No, no, let's not question it. Let's just take it at face value. Dude, you know? I, I said to I said to somebody, I'm like, this is designed to sell razor blades, and someone's like, they do not once feature a razor blade in the entire ad. <laughs> oh my god! It's like, who do you know who made the ad? It's Gillette, <laughs> right? You know what Gillette makes, right? <laughs> They don't have to show you a fucking razor. They don't have to. What do you think they're fucking selling, dipshit? (laughs) Like, do you really think that a giant fucking corporate entity, all of a sudden, that, by the way, has used sex to sell its product for decades, Mm -hmm. you think that all of a sudden they just like, you know what, guys? It's time for us to be socially conscious because not for financial reasons or any of that stuff, even though we're... You know, uh, you know, beholden to shareholders as a corporate entity, and that's how corp- that's how capitalism works in America. If you're, a, you know, a publicly traded company, you answer to shareholders. But despite that, let's take the bold stance of we're pro me too, and men are fucking toxic, and blah blah blah. Like when they did that shit, it was nothing. It had nothing to do with ideology. It had nothing to do with any person on earth saying that we need to convey this message out of virtue. It was about virtue signaling Mm -hmm. to a specific demographic so that they could sell a fucking product, and it was about uh, vice signaling to another demographic so that they would get up in a tizzy, and so there would be the word Gillette on everybody's lips. People said Gillette and talked about the Gillette brand more after that commercial than I'd ever heard combined in the rest of my life before that. <laughs> and you think that's not a win for them? Have you never heard the, the phrase, any publicity is good publicity? Of course. Well, guess what? They just got a whole fucking mountain 
a Mount Everest of fucking publicity, and you think that wasn't cynically calculated? You think that's part of some genuine, honest, face TJ, value they were taking being a... propagated by this company? If you believe that, <laughs> then you are a fucking retard. No, no, no. This, look, this, this company that's all about making money... <laughs> or you're fucking it. retard. Well, well. They're about pleasing their shareholders. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? No, no. They took this bold stance, okay? All right? So bold. So, so bold and so, so brave. I know. I, yeah, because no one... Oh, yeah. hey, guys, we're against rape. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a controversial position. Oh, Gillette. Bow before Gillette. <laughs> they alone protect us from the rape mobs. And I love... Give me a fucking break. The, Give me ten breaks in a row. The best part about it is the people who were against it weren't against it because, <laughs> oh, look at this company, you know, uh, so cynically uh, exploiting people's feelings to make money. It's No, they were like, the message in the ad is bad. It's like, I don't the know. Message <laughs> the message is good. The message is bad. The message is good. The message is bad. You are dupes. Both sides of this argument, this argument are fucking retarded, back word thinking dupes. And you should all be personally ashamed of how miserably, unbelievably gullible and stupid you fucking are. End of story. Yeah, I think that sums it up pretty well. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got two more questions here for you, TJ, before I let you go. Axe away. Um, let's see. Now, the only two times in your whole career I can recall you actually crying on screen was first after your father pa passed away, which is understandable. Yep. And yeah, the second Daddy time, did. Daddy did. Well, Thanks for bringing that up. I'm, I'm, I know, I know. So Thanks for calcium. ruining my night. That was nice of you. <laughs> All right, what's what's the other one? Well, whenever... oh yeah, when I was uh -huh. talk about the, uh, the 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 I was drunk. So yes, you, you know. were drunk. We'll put the uh, caveat. I was drunk, and I was talking about all the the fucking uh, people who write me, who are stuck in you know fundamentalist households and all that shit. And how, you know, no one's giving them any help, none of that stuff. And I just hear the story over and 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 over again. And yeah, I mean, that does, you know, I mean, it gets to me after. I guess it gets to me. I don't know. I never felt like it got to me until I was in that moment saying that stuff. But I guess that on some level it must. And only alcohol can uncover that level of my psyche. Because most of the time... I don't really feel overtly emotional about those kind of messages, but I guess sure. in the accumulation of them over the years and knowing that that's a problem going on in this country, not being addressed in any substantive way, and that, in fact, those kind of stories are dismissed by most people despite the prevalence of people in that situation, right. that pissed me off. And, of course, when I get pissed, I get sad. Uh, sometimes, and uh, you know, I guess I, I guess I squirted out a fucking tear or two. So whatever, you got me in an emotional <laughs> fucking moment. But you know what? I think two. I think two examples of me crying over the course of fucking thirteen years is not bad. Whatever. No, it's it's not. It's it's so funny. It seems it feels like you think I was trying to like be like TJ's a little bitch. He cried on screen. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, hey, look, if, if you cry, I could fucking. Uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter because I could be the most stoic, reserved, strong person ever. And then if my entire family was killed in a fucking train crash and, you know, my my I, let, let's just, you, know, you know, my mom's dead, my stepdad's dead, all my siblings are dead, my wife is dead, everyone I know or care about and love is dead. Um, and like a single solitary tear welled up in my eye didn't even fall but just my eyes got a little watery <laughs> there'd be someone out there on the internet like pussy <laughs> you fucking little bitch why don't you go cry you little bitch you know so <laughs> i'm just trying to preempt that fucker yeah that fucking piece of shit out there who would do that well you know he's out Which there is, oh he's not only is he out there his he, he and his fucking Two million retards who think like him are out there. So, mm. you know. Well, what do you think? Sometimes you just got to kick people in the fucking balls really hard. It tends to get things done. Well, I was going to say, yeah. why do you think, though, when it comes to, like, the young atheists who are kind of told, like, 
the oppression you're facing in your house isn't a problem. We should just downplay this issue. Like, why is it that so many people seem to think it's not a big deal and like that? Because it's not their problem. Right. Same reason that uh, people will eat Hershey's chocolate and not think twice about, hey, you know, I bet some little slave boy in Africa fucking had to pick this at the barrel of a gun. Uh Uh-huh. These cocoa beans, no one thinks about that. No one thinks about the shoes on their feet being made by sweatshop labor. No one thinks about uh, the diamond ring that they gave their fucking girlfriend being uh, another slave labor product. Uh, No one thinks about all of the exploitation that their entire society is built upon. Uh, No one really... A lot of people don't give a fuck about the sick, the poor, anybody. They just feel like, you know, my level of society is important and the levels above me, I guess, are important. But anyone that's below my station in life deserves it. They're just a piece of shit. Oh, you don't like the way you're treated? Well, too fucking bad. I got it easy. I don't give a shit. Uh, That's how people think. And then their own problems, of course, other people are supposed to care about those, but they don't care about anyone that's beneath them. So fuck them. Uh, This whole... I mean, like... If we're really honest about what this country needs, it needs a lot of fucking dead people. Um, you know, I, I took a test the other day, a political test, to see where I stand on the issues, and I was not surprised to find that I am firmly in favor of revolution. And um, you know, I, I want, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's see some fucking Molotovs. Let's see some important financial centers burning to cinders. Uh, let's see the streets running red with blood. And people always <laughs> give me the same bullshit when I talk about this. Like, you know, you wouldn't want to. Yeah, of course. I want to be safe in a fucking underground bunker like Tenacious D in their song City Hall, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, I want to be safe. But yeah, I want the rest of society to destroy itself and then for me to emerge and, uh, you know, lead the people to uh, to a brave new new world. Well- um, I think that's about the only hope. Kind of like, Char- kind of like Charles Manson's plan, I guess, or Ayn Rand's plan. A lot of crazy people seem to have this plan. Now that I think about it, yeah, I'll but- just leave and let society destroy itself, and then when I come back, <laughs> for some reason, I'll be leader. You know, it's like okay, <laughs> I guess maybe. Uh, no, I'm I'm half I'm half serious about that stuff. Like, I, I get you. No. No, Don't but take uh, it at face. See, no, no, we should take important. it. There's no subtext there, TJ. You mean exactly no. what you say, word for word. You know, no. it's not like I'm exaggerating my position because you never hear a position even halfway to that. You know, <laughs> that's another thing. It's like sometimes you got to take a really radical position just because nothing's even close to that position. Like, you know, I got to call for a bloody revolution because, you know. The vast, vast majority of people are just like, incremental change, that's how you got to do it. <laughs> it's like, you know, there's probably something in between like, well, you know, maybe in 30 years we can change something. There's got to be a different, there's got to be something between that and let the blood flow through the streets. Right. Let's try to meet in the middle there somewhere, you know. Let's do some big changes, <laughs> but, you know, not necessarily, not necessarily you know, uh, mass murder in the streets, but not necessarily like, yeah, well, you know, we could change something in, I don't know, 2058 will change something. No. Fuck that. 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 That's how I feel. That makes sense. You gotta, you gotta be on the more extreme end of the spectrum so that the uh, more moderate end of the spectrum doesn't seem as scary right. to those who are. Afraid. You gotta fucking have your your uh, your Malcolm X to make MLK look like the reasonable it, one. Exactly, you know? exactly. And uh, okay, so there's just this here. I wanted to say, recently on a stream, a DFF stream, you guys said that things are gonna change for the better. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, can you elaborate on that at all? Like, what do you mean? What's going to be different? If anything? <coughs> I, I don't want to, I want people to see, I don't want to, I, I want to follow the rule of storytelling show. Don't tell. Okay. Um, I will say that, uh, visually I'll give you some vague details, I guess. Sure. Visually show will look a little different. 
there might be some sort of overarching narrative that there's not currently. Oh. Uh, you're probably going to see uh, subject matters approached in a slightly different way. You're probably going to see more integration of uh, maybe some sketch comedy or whatever else. Um, you know, not overbearingly so, but I think when it's appropriate, maybe a little bit of that or, you know, some other stuff. Uh, there's going to be more variety, I think, to the way we cover things, and it's going to be more streamlined. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there's some changes coming. I don't know when they're coming. Uh, maybe they're going to come in February. Maybe they're not going to come till March or April. I don't know. They're going to come this year. I'm sure of that. Uh, and we have a vision. We have an idea. We have our DFF 2.0 in our heads uh, and um, I think that it's going to be something that feels like a natural outgrowth of what we've done so far, but it's going to be as much of a departure from what we've done so far as what we've done so far was a departure from DP. It's okay. going to be uh, a radical revision, but uh, with the core remaining intact. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what it is you guys have planned. And like you said, I think it probably will be more interesting if you just have it revealed at the time than... Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. I mean, our strategy might not even be to spring it on people really quick. It might be a slow transitional change into that where people don't even necessarily notice it's happening until it's happened. Or or it could just be like, boom, it's different. Fuck you. Who knows? Uh, We got a lot of stuff to handle up before then. We're working on a website. Um, It's been a long, arduous, difficult process, but we want to get it right. Uh And... um, that's gum- that's come along very well. That's almost complete. Um, that's going to be launching very very soon, um, and hopefully improving steadily after that. Um, and that's going to be something that's going to be very useful to our patrons in particular, but also to uh, our casual viewers as well. Um, so I mean I don't know. There's a lot of stuff we're working on. A lot of it's slow going. A lot of it's you know a little bit of progress every day kind of stuff. But you know. Slow and steady wins the race. It's always been my philosophy. Actually, with DFF, it's always been my philosophy. With um, with my personal stuff, I, I take much more of a like, all right, I started a project. How do I finish it today? You know? <laughs> I've never been the kind of person who can like, all right, this video is half done. I'll come back to it tomorrow. Like that doesn't happen. If I start working on something, I ain't stopping till it's either done or I'm dead. Right. So. And that's probably why I can't get the level of quality of my shit up to some of those other people I see. Because like a lot of people, obviously, like like a contra points or something, obviously puts like days and days and days and days and days into video content. And I just can't do that. Like I want to do it, get it done, get it out, get on to the next thing. Uh, I guess I've really chosen quantity over quality, which is weird because a lot of people feel like my stuff still comes out too slow, but it's just I'm working on DFF and all this other shit as well. Uh But um, that's just my mentality. I don't know. You didn't ask me anything about it. I just kind of voluntarily, voluntarily, that's a terrible, voluntarily (laughs) threw that out. Uh, So whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Any more questions? Let me know. I hey, look, this I I'm glad for you to to expand on it a bit because you know I I know that people are interested to hear this and there's something that I wanted to ask you know as Go sort ahead. of a wrap up question when it comes to DFF yeah, is wrap it up. Who actually is the best DFF host? Now I know on the episode Paul won that award and I know you know right. but but who actually is the best DFF host? Well, I mean, uh, clearly. Uh, you know, Paul is called Paul's ego, but Paul's ego, in my opinion, does not hold a candle to TJ's ego. (laughs) Um, my ego is enormous. It's gigantic. Uh, I mean, that being said, you know, uh, the people voted for Paul and look, Paul is a tremendous talent. I think in a lot of ways, he really connects with people. He's consistently funny. He's consistently creative. He's consistently challenging people, not giving a fuck what people think. Yeah. I think that Paul is an excellent host. And there's a reason why, to some extent, the show is kind of structured around Paul. When I'm writing a script, I'm always kind of thinking about, like, 
how do I make this something that Paul can work off of? Because if Paul is working off of it successfully, then we're working off of it, of it successfully. So I think that there is, uh, I think Paul is in a lot of ways the heart of DFF. Uh-huh. Uh, I think of myself as being the brains of DFF, me and Scotty together, really. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, me being more of the creative side like let's just say i'm the the left brain or i'm the right brain because that's where the creative Creative side comes right i'm 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 the right brain scotty's the left brain paul's the heart and i don't think dff exists without that dynamic i mean there you know uh dp uh went on without uh without us uh it continued on with a new cast um i do not I, i think that was a mistake um I, I, I don't think it's a mistake that uh, they continued to do a show. I, I think it's a mistake to continue to call it DP. Right. Uh, but that's their decision. I respect that. I support that. Not, not what I thought should have happened, but uh-huh. that's fine. But that has nothing to do with anything. My point is that, you know, if Paul said, I'm leaving tomorrow, there's not going to be like, this is the new Paul, and now this is DFF the new batch or whatever. If Scotty left, this is, it's not, it doesn't, it does not go on if any I mean, it, it is the three of us right right that is what it is so really on, on in that sense there can't be a best host uh-huh because every host is vital it's it's based around fundamentally those three people but i can understand why paul the heart of the show is viewed as the most integral part uh but i really think that it's three equal pieces that bring it all together. And I think that Scotty doesn't get enough uh, credit for what he contributes to the show because it's a little more subtle. I think what he brings to the table. Yeah. Uh, Paul, obviously tremendously important. Uh, Uh, I think I'm important. I don't know. I mean, it's really, uh, it's my perception honestly doesn't matter that much as much as the people who are watching, the people who are viewing it. Maybe, it, maybe if Paul had two other guys sitting next to him and it was DFF, people would be like, this is just as good. Fuck them Kirk brothers. You never <laughs> needed that. We're holding you back. I don't know. Uh, but uh, to me, it's the three of us. And that's what it's always going to be. And if it, if it ever reaches a point where it's not that, then DFF will just end. Yeah. I, I, that's what you gave me a really good, really thoughtful answer. When I asked who you thought the best host, I thought you just like, well, it's me, of course. But then you actually gave me a really. Well, my, my personal answer is, yeah. I mean, like, I obviously think it's me because I'm an egomaniac. I mean, <laughs> but I recognize I'm an egomaniac, so I can't just go with that. You're right. right? right. Yeah, it's, it's obviously me because I'm awesome. <laughs> I guess I could. It's how I feel, but it's not what I think necessarily. And I always try to describe my thoughts above my feelings. I have a trick question for you. Unlike TJ. Ben Shapiro, by the way. Oh, Ben Shapiro, he, he he puts facts before feelings. Okay. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. He says that, so he must. Exactly. He says it, so it has to be true. So here's right. the the truly true trick question that, to end this fucking trick weird question. ass. All right, movie. trick question. Let's do it. Okay. Was no cheese a statement of disappointment, or was it just an observation? You know, I've always been in the observation camp, but now that you ask me after years have passed and I really hear it in my head, I think it was absolutely a statement of disappointment. Really? I thought it was just a fucking, he was just like, oh, no trees, you know, like I, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering it, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, no trees. <laughs> That's it... what I hear. So I, I'm thinking, eh, disappointment. So the, I think he was pissed. Yeah. No, no, he needed his fucking cheese. Um, but I don't want to talk about that fat fuck. No, I'm sorry. End I, with something better. I, Give me a better I'm, question. I'm, I had to fuck it. Yeah, well, look. You uh, got to come up with something else. We can't end with the, 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 the fucking matinee. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, well, tell me some plans. Do you have any plans for the future of the TJ Kirk channel specifically? Like Abandon Hope and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, my plans with that right now are I want to figure out things I've never done before and do them. Mm. I'm tired of I'm tired of relying on well let's do this kind of video well let's do that kind of video like no it's it's time for me to th- I think my Disney video I did recently was kind of my first foray into that and uh 
it sucks that so often the things that get the biggest response out of core fans are the things that never seem to go beyond the fan base. Because I've had so many people tell me, I want, I love that video, I wish you'd do it again, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, it's sitting there at way less views than some of the more clickbaity shit I do. So I'm trying to figure out, how do I make something that seems clickbaity that people will go to, but is the opposite of what they expect? And I kind of did that, I think, with the abortion video, which is not about abortion at all. It's a total fucking lie. Um, it's about overpopulation. Yeah. yeah. So I got. I think I'm just going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to trick people into watching videos they think are about one thing, but are actually about something completely different. And uh, fuck with people and uh, not give a shit what they think beyond uh, just amusing myself and hoping, I guess, that somebody likes it. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good approach. I think that's a good approach to you, Jay. And uh, with that... Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, oh, fuck it. I don't know. If, if if it puts food on the table and it's entertaining, you know, that's probably the best way to be. Yeah. Oh. I'm only really concerned with the second one at this point. Because, I mean, whatever. I'll figure out some food. I'll just... I'll hunt and kill people if I have to. <laughs> I don't care. Hey, uh, thanks for giving me your time, man. I appreciate you taking this interview the glorified ideology questions I've presented you with. Well, I, uh, I thank you for inviting me here, and uh, I did it because you've always been a good moderator in uh, my chats and uh, always enjoyed your presence there, always one of the few voices of non-retardation. So I thank you for that, and uh, you have yourself a merry little Christmas. Thanks, TJ. Have a, have a good Christmas, months. man. Bye. <laughs> See you, dude.